Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q4, the bi-weekly contest 94 count anagrams. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this poem. So this one is, for me, problem-solving-wise, structurally easier than Q3, to be honest, for this contest. But I think this one is also impossible to solve if you don't have the math for it. Uh, so if you don't know the, the mathematical background behind this problem, it is what it is. I mean, there's really no way for you to kind of derive enough of it, to be frank. Um, like, if you don't know it, you can't come up with it. Maybe you could Google it or whatever. But, but yeah, you just have to learn this stuff. And that's why this could be hard. But that said, it's, it, it's still an application of stuff. But it's just not... Um, it's not a... like. It's, but it's not that bad. Like, if, if you have um, uh, combinatorics... Um, if you have a little bit of combinatorics background, if you have a little bit of competitive programming background, this is pretty straightforward. But um, and I say this competitive programming because it um, um, the first thing to notice is of course there's modular math. Let me mean it's not the first thing, but it's one of the first things that, to notice. And because of modular math, in this case, if you want to divide by a modular uh, under modular space, you have to know about. Um, uh, you have to know about uh, uh, modular inverses, which is kind of like a ridiculous thing for an interview, to be frank. So if, if you're doing an interview, um, you probably don't need to know this part unless you're doing some, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to know it. Um, but it's a very competitive programming thing, so a lot of competitive programmers know it, but I wouldn't consider it part of the interview package unless you're doing some weird um, or like really like specific things for, that needs it or something like that. Or if your interview is being weird, I suppose. Um, okay. Uh, and maybe always, because always need stuff like this sometimes. But yeah, so, okay. So I'm going to go over two things. Um, and I'm not going to go over the modular inverse part just because there, there's a lot of math. But or not, not in depth anyway. But the modular inverse is just basically the idea that A times B mod, mod is equal to C or something like this, right? Um, so then, because you can't just divide under the mod, um, if you want to, div quote unquote, divide it on one side, then it's equal to C times B, the inverse of B under mod or something like this. Um, I mean, and, and I'm doing a lot of hand wavy stuff. Um, I really, you know, if you're interested in competitive programming and stuff like that, or just learning stuff about number theory and modular math in general, this is a very basic thing. And this is something that you should, you know, like, read up on. So I'm not going to dive into this part too quickly, uh, too much, um, just because uh, it's beyond my depth to explain right now. Um, so what am I doing here, right? This is basically a, a factorial and inverse factorial. So basically, this is a list of, you know, uh, i factorial under mod, and this is the list of 1 over i factorial under mod, basically speaking. Um, yeah, actually, I have a typo here. No, oh, wait, no, no, this is right. But uh, yeah, and basically, you know, I, I, this is how you do the modular inverse in Python. It's a little bit tricky in certain languages, but, uh, and people usually have libraries for it. I'm very thankful that Python already has it. But you could also use the, uh, even if it doesn't have the negative one um, in Python, you could just use um, the little remainder theorem or something like this. So uh, yeah, maybe it's called the little remainder theorem. I didn't make it up. The Chinese of uh, men's little film. Uh, yeah, so definitely Google that up as well. Oops. I think the Chinese, uh, maybe I mixed up the Chinese remainder film or something. Hmm. But anyway, so yeah, so this is part of the setup. Um, we'll go over why we need this in a second, but yeah. Um, in this problem, you're just giving a, a list of words, and each one can be anagram. Uh, independently, right? And because they're independent, um, one thing that you may n remember from combinatorics or just like, you know, elementary math or whatever, I think they made it go over it, is that you could just multiply them, right? Meaning that, you know, let's say the two two words, if there are five ways to do the words on the left, five ways to do the words on the right, then you multiply them to be 25, like a Cartesian product, if you want to visualize it that way. I don't know if Cartesian, <laughs> I don't know if there are many people who knows the word Cartesian product and not you know, but anyway, maybe it's a, sometimes I'm a little too mathematical. But yeah, so then now, 
But what that means for us is that now we can do each of those words independently and then multiply them together, right? Um, and Enneagram is actually a pretty well-known combinatorical thing. I think if you take an intro um, to combinatorics or something, which is, I know, a junior level course in college, or I remember it, at least in my day uh, as being that level. Um, if you take someone like that, you know, you can do them independently. Oh, sorry. And, and so you can take the anagram and basically um, without really proving it um, because, you know, um, and you may, to be honest, maybe this part is just easier to, to Google up. Um, but basically the way to do it is that, you know, you have some N factorial over A factorial, B factorial, C factorial, where these are the number of ways to, to, um, uh, or sorry, the number, the counts that, the counts of each um, uh, distinct item, right? Meaning that, for example, if you have the word, uh, I don't know, banana, right? Then, uh, oops. Uh, what the heck? What the? So let's say, uh, what the? Just give me three quotes. What are you doing? Why, why is it? Being real, okay. Um, you have three A's, you have two N's and one B, right? The, lo the logic is kind of the same as what we talked about, meaning that for each for each one of these, um, two of the A's, the two A's, or three A's, because I can't count. Three A's, two N's, and one B, right? Um, well, one of the B has to be in the same place, meaning that let's say we don't, we can only move around, right? So how many duplicates are there in the n factorial? So n factorial is just, you know, we, we try every combination and every combination, right? Um, so then now we go, okay, well, there are th three factorial uh, ways of putting a's in this specific order, right? Meaning if you want to think about it as a1, a2, a3, well, there's three factorial ways, and I don't want to, I'm not going to go over all the ways, but but you can uh, kind of think about it this way. So there, but you can think about it as the number of ways that there are duplicate A's, right? And then now, the same thing for N, right? It's two factorial because there's two, so it's just N1, N2. Um, and then now you multiply them together because same thing as we said earlier about independence and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, so th that's a really back of the, you know, I hope you trust me kind of proof on why this formula works. Um, and this is also very kind of well known, so that's why a lot of people are able to do it very quickly if they are, you know, practice and studied in this. Um, but, but yeah, but that's pretty much really the hard. Or I won't even say that's the hard part, but that's really the hard, the heart of the <laughs> problem. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. And every. And then you just have to put them together and keep them under mod. That's the hard part. Um, so here we take the frequency map. That's what this is. Um, I sum it up to get the n. Probably have done it the other way, like length dot word or something. I don't know why I did it this way. But in any case, yeah, this is the n factorial. And then this is for each one. You know, the um, we we multiply by the inverse of it so that this is the inverse under the mod. So you know. And then we mod it every time just to be safe. And that's pretty much it. Um, so what's the complexity here, right? It actually is going to be linear time and linear space. Um, because here, the factorials and the inverse factorial will only have n items. We structure it that way. It actually doesn't even have to have n items. It could be just the length of the longest word, but eh, this is fine. Um, this is linear in the size of the word. This is also linear in the size of the word. This is linear in the size of the word because each character, in fact, this is all of 26, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and because each um, total and this fits in mod, this would just be one, all of one in terms of, you know, you could say all of alpha square or something like this for multiplication. I don't know, right? But you get the idea. It'll be pretty fast because the word size isn't that, uh, that big. Um, so, yeah, so this is all linear time, linear space. Um, and that's all I have for this one. In fact, this space is only all 26, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you did it. Um, like I said, if you don't know the math, you don't know the math. So don't, and it just means that this is an opportunity to learn, right? There's no, nothing to feel bad about. It's just, you don't know it, you don't know it, you know? Uh, and this is, yeah. 
Um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. And you could watch me stop it live during the contest. Now. We'll come back to it. Let's see if I can do this one first. <sighs> okay, so given string S contain one or more words. Anagram. Okay, number of distinct anagrams. Okay, let's remember the mod song first. Mod, 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 mod. It seems pretty straightforward. Um, uh, I have to have all them. I mean, I have to set it up, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. what I want. Mm. I always forget how to do this to be honest but I don't know that way I don't need all of it, but uh, it is what it is. way it is. Mm, okay, whoops. We also have to mod over two or something, or minus, or whatever. I'm not going to do little Chinese remainder for now. Um, okay. This part I did forget. I might need to mod a little bit, but it's fine. Um, I don't know why I wrote it this way when I wrote it the other way clearly. But, hmm. Unless I missed something, it should be okay. Back to this one though. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this poem, this explanation, and how you did in this contest. Um, stay good, stay happy to, you know, to a happy weekend. Um, stay good, stay healthy to good mental health, and have a happy weekend, happy holidays, and all these good stuff. Uh, I'll see you later. See you soon, and goodbye.